of Jesus was born in Bethlehem. Do you know where you were born? Were you born here in Phoenix? Yeah. Okay, so you were born in Phoenix. Let's see. I'm going to put Phoenix. I was born in Phoenix. You were born here in Phoenix? Yeah, you've always lived here, right? You were born here in Phoenix? Phoenix, Phoenix. You were born in Phoenix? You were born in Phoenix? Levi was born in Phoenix? You were born in Phoenix? Favor, do you remember where you were born? Where was that? In Africa, Cameroon? I'll just say Cameroon because you don't know the city. Cameroon. How about you guys? Same? Cameroon? Where were you born here? Now, you guys were born here, right? Yeah. Yeah, they were born here. That's right. And you guys were all born here. I know that. No, you weren't. No, where were you born? I have no idea. You have no idea? Me too. I mean, there's someone in Arizona, a different state. I mean, different city. Different city? Mesa? Tempe? Chandler? Gilbert? But you were born here in this yeah, city. Yeah, the You were born in the Phoenix area, though, right? Yeah, you didn't live in Tucson, here. did you? Flagstaff? No, I'm trying to think. No, I remember when you were born, though. You were born here. You were born in the Phoenix area. I remember. Miss Faith, where were you born? Evansville, Indiana. Evansville, Indiana. Where was you born? <laughs> I know. I know. Um, and I was born in a town <laughs> called <laughs> Kingston. <laughs> Pennsylvania. Mm. That's where I was born, in Kingston, Pennsylvania. So you lived in Pennsylvania? Yep, I used to live in Pennsylvania. That's where my grandma Is that right? Yeah? Do you know a town? No. no? Now, I can, I can safely say that all of you are growing up in Phoenix, Arizona. I'm not in seven. And I'll put. Now, Miss Faith, where did you grow up? Um, all over? All over. I grew up in Arizona. I grew up in the Philippines and in Indiana. So Miss Faith lived in, she actually lived in Mesa. Yeah. And she lived in the Philippines. And she lived in uh, Jasper, Indiana. Which is right near, not far from Evansville, where she was born. Now, I grew up in a little town called Avon, New York. See, because when I when I was a kid, when I was a little baby, we moved from Pennsylvania to New Jersey, and then we moved back. You you've been in New Jersey? Me, my sister, my brother, my brother, and my mom. Two of my sisters were born in New Jersey. And then we moved back to Pennsylvania. Then we moved to Arizona. Then we moved to, back to Pennsylvania. Then we moved back to Arizona. And then we moved to New York. And that's where I spent most of my time. Growing, my time growing up. Okay, so do you remember what town? Okay, so we got California then. I do not know who I was born. All right. But if you notice that a lot of you guys were born and you lived in the same town. And, but not everybody. Some people were born someplace Miss Faith moved around a lot. She also lives in another, uh, in a couple other towns in Indiana. I moved around a lot. I lived in uh, four states growing up. When I started sixth grade, I was in my seventh school. Wait, what? Mm -hmm. Seriously? 
And my sister, when I started sixth grade, she was starting seventh grade, and she was in her eighth school. Because she started kindergarten in New Jersey. So you to a different school every year? It seemed that way. You don't have kindergarten? It did seem that way. No, there were, like, for example, I went to fourth grade in Pennsylvania. I went to two different schools here in Arizona in fifth grade, and then I had a completely different school in New York in sixth grade. So, now why? Did I ever have a fifth grade? Yeah, I think New York. New York was probably my favorite place because, first of all, I lived there from the time we moved there when I was 10, and I lived there until I was 29. And that's where I went to high school, and that's where I went to college. I graduated from high school, I graduated from college, and then I lived there for a long time after. And yes, I am a Buffalo Bills fan. 47 to 17. You know that's gonna get on. Woo, woo. <laughs> that's gonna get on the, uh, on the thing. But Jesus, he was born in Bethlehem, but he didn't stay in Bethlehem. You see, because what happened is that when the king found out that a um, baby was born called the King of the Jews. He decided, there's not going to be another king. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kill that baby. Because he didn't want any other king. He was afraid that another king would come and would do away with him. It would be the end of his throne. And so he decided that there's not going to be another king. I'll take that, thank you. I will take that, thank you. He decided that there was not going to be another king and that he was going to kill that baby. Except for one thing. The people that knew where the baby was fooled him and they went back home another way and they didn't tell him where the baby was. And so he went and he gave orders and had every baby in Bethlehem that was a boy Girls, you're safe on this one. Every baby in Bethlehem that was two years old or younger was killed. Everyone. So, how did Jesus escape that? Because one night, Jesus is... Uh, Jesus' father, Joseph, had a dream, and God said, get out of here. So, God came to Joseph in a dream and said, get out of here. They are going to try to kill your baby. And so they moved to Egypt. They moved to another country completely different. And they stayed there until the, the king that tried to kill him died himself. And then they came back to Israel. But when they found out that his son was king now, they said, we don't want to live there. And so they moved up north in an area called Galilee to a town that was called Nazareth. And that's where Jesus grew up. He grew up in a town called Nazareth. Do you, does anybody know what Joseph did for a living? No. Joseph, what do you think? Carpenter. Joseph was a carpenter. Joseph was a carpenter. Now, you know what a carpenter is, Jonathan? Carpenter is a guy that works with wood. They build things out of wood. Sometimes they build furniture. Sometimes they build houses. Now back then they didn't have wooden houses, but they had wooden things. And a carpenter would be the one that built it. Now, what's that? 
Carpenters, wood. Carpenters make things out of wood. And that's what Joseph's daddy did. Or Joseph's daddy. That's what Jesus' daddy did. His, actually, it was his stepdad. Because who was his? Who was Jesus' real father? God! Throw it out if you don't. God was his father. But Joseph was his stepdad. And so, would you like to throw that out? A little more? And so, Joseph listened to God and he saved his son's life. But they decided to move back to Nazareth. That's where Joseph and Mary lived before Jesus was born. It's a little town up in the north part of Israel in an area called Galilee, and nobody cares about Nazareth. At least nobody did until now. But that's where Jesus was, that's where he grew up. And you see, when Jesus got older, and he understood that God had a calling on his life, God wanted him to minister. And he began to do miracles. Who remembers, we talked about it last week, who remembers the first miracle that he did? Tommy, do you remember? I think it's one like where somebody had an axe, he borrowed it from his cousin, but then it went into like the water, so then he so then threw a stick on it and then it filled in. Yeah, that was a miracle, yes. But that was actually in the Old Testament, and that was a, a, a prophet, Elisha, that did that. Do you remember? That wasn't his first when he walked on water. That wasn't his first miracle. Nope, that wasn't it either. That was good, but it wasn't a miracle. Turn water into wine. He turned water into wine. Now, he lived a lot though. He didn't live, when he grew up, he didn't live much in Nazareth. He was from Nazareth, but he didn't live there. He lived in a town that was a little ways away called Capernaum. And he did a lot of his miracles in Capernaum. And one day he came back to Nazareth and it says he went into the synagogue. Does anybody know what a synagogue is? Does anybody besides favor? <laughs> favor, you're taking up all the right answers. Does anybody besides favor know what a synagogue is? It's not quite a temple, but you're on the right track. What do you think? A synagogue is no different than a church. That was their church. Now, temple, temple was a very special place. That's some place they only want once a year. But the church that they went to every week was called the synagogue. And what they would do, now people didn't have books back then, so they would they would have all the scrolls in the synagogue that had the scriptures. And they would call on people, does anybody want to read? Just like I do with you guys. Sometimes they'll say, do you, does anybody want to read? Anaya, do you want to read? So why are you picking on me? And it was Jesus' custom. It was what he would normally do. When he went into the synagogue, if they asked if anybody wanted to read, he would raise his hand and they would give him the scrolls and he would read. And here's what happened. Let me come get my Bible. <clears throat> Those of you following along in Luke chapter 4, if hopefully you've already found it because it's right up there. In Luke chapter 4, and let me read this to you, starting in the 16th verse. It says here, So he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. And he was handed the book of, uh, of the prophet Isaiah. And when he opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, 
to set at liberty those who are oppressed to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Then he closed the book and he gave it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all who were in the synagogue were fixed on him. They were all staring at him. And he began to say to them, Today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. In other words, Jesus said, I am the fulfillment of that scripture. So all bore witness to him and marveled at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, Isn't this Joseph's son? And he said to them, You will surely say this proverb to me, Physician, heal yourself. Whatever you've heard done in Capernaum, do also in your country. Then he said, Assuredly, I say to you, no prophet is accepted in his own country. And he went on about that, but... When he told them that, they got mad at him. They got mad at him. And they tried to kill him. They were so mad at him. They wanted to throw him off a cliff. You see, here's the thing. God anoints people to do great things. But God doesn't always anoint great people. God anoints ordinary people like you and me. God anoints the ordinary. And you might see somebody up there that's a minister. He's doing great things. And he said, wait a minute. He's just a guy. She's just a girl. I knew this person growing up. This person is nothing. And maybe you get mad. Or maybe it happens to you. Maybe God anoints you to a great ministry. And all the people around you go, wait a minute. How can, how can Matthias be this great minister? I knew him. I knew him as a kid. He was a brat. Uh, oh, 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 Dave, how could you say that? You <laughs> Oh, Jordan. Oh, Jordan. Hot meat kettle. <laughs> you know what? Listen. Listen to me, guys. Listen to me. Listen to me. Jaden, 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 Jaden. Come here, please. You're going to be my special buddy. You're going to sit right there, okay? My special buddy. All right, ready? One, two, three. Boom. Okay. No, you gotta stay there. You gotta stay there. That's your special seat. I almost did that myself. I heard somebody talking about this guy. He is the head of a university. He's the president of a university over in in Zambia, in Africa. And he's going on and on and on about this guy. What a great job he's doing over there. And I kind of know this guy. I've kind of known him for over 30 years. Because he's married to my sister. And he's going on and on about this guy. And I'm thinking, it's Scott. He's my brother-in-law. I've known Scott when he does good things. And I've known Scott when he doesn't do such good things. And then the Lord... So you're being just like the people of Nazareth. You're being just like the people of Nazareth. You see, it's easy to say, eh, I knew them as a kid, they're nothing. Eh, I've seen them get mad. I've seen them acting not so nice. Eh, I've seen them do things that they shouldn't do. But let me tell you something. When the anointing of God is on you, God is using you as a vessel. God is using you for His glory. First of all, 
If God is using you, don't go acting like you're some big thing. You're not. You're not. God just happens to use you. Do you know that God once caused a donkey to talk? If God could cause a donkey to talk, how big was that donkey? Nothing. Then you then you're not that big either. When God uses you, it's all it's all God. It's not you. It's not because you're something special. Even though I think you guys are all special. And God loves you. Every one of you is special. But what I'm saying is, you're not bigger than God. And when God starts to use other people, don't go around and say, eh, I just I knew them. They're not that hot. Because that's insulting to God. God is saying, I chose to use them. I chose them. God chose his son, Jesus. He wanted to use him. And even though the people of Nazareth said, Ha! I knew him when he was a kid. He's nothing. No, actually, he's being used by God. And that's good enough. That's good enough. Let me put you down a second, okay? You're getting heavy. You're getting to be a big boy. <laughs> You're ready to Yeah. <clears throat> so two things I want you to know. Two things. Can you count to two? One, two. Can you count to two? One, two. One, two. Good job. Give me five. Mm -hmm. All right. Two things that God wants you to know. First of all, God wants to use every one of you, John. Now, you might say, but I'm just a normal person. I'm not that special. So what? If God wants to use you, let him use you. Because God can use every one of you to do something mighty. You hear that? God can use every one of you to do something mighty, even Samuel. Every one of you to do something mighty. Levi, God wants to use you. And God can use you. Jaden, God wants to use you. And he can use you. Even though you're little, he can use you. Jonathan, God wants to use you. He wants to use you. Roman, God wants to use you. Well, now what he does, Jason and Jaden, when God wants to use you, and he will. He'll want to use you. Don't go around saying, mm hmm, I'm being used by God. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -hmm. You know that's getting on the video. <laughs> I'm something special because God has used me. <laughs> Bow to me. God has used me. Nope. nope. You're just a regular person. At the same time, don't be jealous when God uses somebody else. Yeah. Don't be jealous when God uses somebody else. Don't say, I knew them when they were a kid. They're not. They. If God's using them, me. That makes it something special. Me. Yes, it is. It actually is. Don't be jealous. Don't want what somebody else has. And that's really when people say, ah, they're nothing. That's usually what they're saying is they're saying, I really wish I I really wish that were me. You be content with what God gives you. But when God wants to use you, say yes. Always say yes. And God can use every one of you to do something mighty if you'll let him. All right, let's go ahead and bow our heads and let's pray. Yes. Father, we thank you because you're the one who uses us. You're the one who equips us. It doesn't matter where we were born. It doesn't matter where we grew up. It doesn't matter whether we're rich or poor. It doesn't matter whether we're male or female. It doesn't matter whether we're young or old. You want to use us. And first of all, Father, I ask you to help us to say yes any time that you want to use us. And not to think that we're something greater than we are because all the power comes from you and from you alone. But second, Lord, if you choose to use those around us, I ask you to give us the special grace that we won't be jealous of them, that we won't try to tear them down and say, I knew them when they were little. They're nothing. 
Because God, we know that they are honored when you choose to use them. And now I pray a blessing on everyone that's here. I pray that you would touch everyone. I pray that you would use everyone, that your spirit would be in them. And that they would be acutely aware of you. And bless them. Use them to your goodness in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.